across the iron dogs and they could be raised and lowered, the spits could be raised uh, and lowered or the iron dogs could be pulled away depending on cooking times. The drip tray goes underneath to catch the um, fat, the cooking juices from the meat and they would be used, that would be used in other, uh, with other cooking. The fire would be lit first in the morning from embers that have been kept overnight and uh, then the cooking and the preparation for the main meal of the day would be un underway fairly quickly early in the morning. Main meal of the day generally taken about 11 o'clock in the time of the Tudors. Uh, it varied of course uh, whether you were in the town and conducting business or whether you were in rural areas but around about 11 o'clock or so sometimes even a little bit earlier um, in the winter when the light was uh, uh, not so plentiful and then the meal would be over and that would leave plenty of time then to clear up before the end of the working day. It's hard to imagine the heat and the effort to go into uh, food preparation in those days. Now, meat was important. Um, if you were very poor, you didn't have a lot of meat, if at all. If you were lucky enough to have some meat, it generally went into your sort of cottage pot, uh, which was a sort of like, a bit like a, a porridge stew with grains, with um, vegetables, anything really that was available. Uh, however, if you were a bit richer, um, sort of these rising middle classes, a bit like our Lawrence Washington here at Salisbury Manor in the 16th century, um, then having plenty of meat was a sign of social status and wealth. Right, now this is a list of meat that Henry VIII, with his travelling household, probably about 100 people, um, had on a journey to Calais. And the list is as follows. Six oxen, eight calves, 40 sheep, 12 pigs, 132 capons, seven swans, 20 storks, 34 pheasants, 192 partridges, 192 cocks, 56 herons, 84 pullets, 720 larks, 240 pigeons, 24 peacocks, and 192 plovers were consumed on one day. Oh.